there and welcome to you talking to me. Today we focus on Ukraine crisis, the battle between Russia and Ukraine and the reaction of the European Union. And for this I have the pleasure to welcome Mr. Elmar Brock. Hello and welcome to you. Hello. So you're the chair of the European Parliament Committee on Foreign Affairs. Uh, I will start with a really simple question and I would like of course to have a short and clear answer. So Russia annexed uh, last March Crimea, southern region of Ukraine. So do you think Russia win the battle? No, I think uh, Russia has violated international law. For the first time since 1945, one country has occupied and, and made an annexation of another part of another country. The first time since 1945. This is just not acceptable and we will not recognize that. So Russia didn't win this battle? But I think uh, Russia will see that if it continues in the Ukrainian policy that there will be sanctions uh, which will be very harmful for Russia in the economic development. Russia has a disastrous economy and needs European help and if it does not have that for the modernization, Russia will be in a bad shape uh, for a long, long time. And how will uh, the European Union punish Russia? We Give me some examples of We do not continue sanctions. negotiations uh, for a new agreement, uh, which means especially to help them in, in the modernization of their economy. Uh, responsible persons cannot travel to Europe anymore. They cannot come to their bank uh, accounts. They cannot use their tiny flats in London or can have holidays on the Côte d'Azur. And uh, thirdly, there might be uh, sanctions against uh, certain parts of the uh, Russian economy which will be uh, a problem for them and in order to ex explain to them by that methods that the violation of international law by military means is not acceptable. Mm, so now if you have, imagine you have a teenager in front of you and ask you the question, uh, is Mr. Putin uh, a monster? What would you answer to him? I never would say about a human being that he is a monster, but he has violated international law, he is uh, fighting against the democratic forces in his own country and he has used military forces in the 21st January, uh, first, 21st century. This is just not acceptable. He is violating the peaceful development of our societies. And actually, I mean, the young people can be worried and also all the population of the world population. If, do you think the EU can face another war? No, I think the European Union is the synonym for peace and therefore we will not use force in this case. We will defend ourselves uh, but we will not do a wage war in such a case but uh, we will use all the other instruments which are available to explain to Russia that they have problems if they continue such a policy. So we're not facing a next war, no, not soon? I hope I everyone is intelligent enough not to do that and have not the same automatism we had for the First World War for example, and that every key one keeps his nerves in order to avoid a war. But actually, I mean, the European Union wants to put uh, sanctions, but they keep exporting uh, weapons to Russia. Do you think they have to stop it? They have to stop it, and most of the countries have it already done. Germany, for example, have stopped uh, this uh, cooperation. I think it's not acceptable in such a moment of uh, Russian behavior, we should send them weapons. And coming back to Ukraine situation, should, should the Ukraine join the European Union? I think the Ukraine would not be able for a long, long time to do that because they do not feel the conditions for that. Uh, but what we have to do now, do a uh, an free trade area, do an association agreement which is signed now and develop for step by step the further relationship. For example, a Norwegian solution, something like that for the Ukraine, what will be in 20 years time or so, I do not know. So what, uh, tell me a bit more about this political agreement we which signed uh, just uh, during the summit. What is it about concretely? Explain. The association agreement uh, together with the free trade area means uh, that there's a close political cooperation, develop the, help uh, Ukraine to develop the democracy, the rule of law, have better governance, but also the free trade area means that without uh, uh, customs, for example, uh, the Ukrainian goods can come to Europe and that we have a step-by-step -step inclusion uh, of uh, the Ukrainian economy in the European internal market to give them a better chance to become a modern society with a growing economy. Mm. 
And what uh, do you think this Ukraine and Crimea crisis showed, I mean, about your European Union? What are the weaknesses and the strengths that was highlighted? Look, if you have an autocratic system, then one person can decide everything. In a democracy, even if 28 countries come together, it's more complicated. That's the way of democracy. But at the end of the day, I know that democracy and freedom will win. I think that Russia cannot bring other people again under their uh, power and that we have to see that this means that we have to have a long uh, positioning in ourselves in order to win that battle. And I'm confident that freedom at the end of the day uh, will be the winner. The weakness of the European Union is a lack of solidarity. No, not lack of solidarity. In democratic uh, uh, states, you need you have different uh, uh, decision-making procedures, and especially if you have include 28 countries. It's by nature more complicated. A dictator for a first moment has always an advantage about it uh, uh, compared to a democracy. But in the long run, this dictator, this autocratic regime, whatsoever we have here, uh, is uh, in a situation which will not make it possible for him to win. And what about the energy dependency of the European Union towards uh, Russia? First of all, I must say that Russia depends more on energy exports than we uh, uh, depend on the import of energy. Russia's budget is to 50, 60, 70 percent dependent on the export of energy. If they stop that, they are bankrupt. Uh, and we have, I think, enough possibilities to diversify. We have enough reserves. So in such a case, uh, I think Russia has more problems than us. So we have to be careful also about how we sanction Russia. Yeah, we have to be careful, but we have to also be clear. Uh, we have to show that uh, breaking uh, the rule of law and breaking international law cannot, have, cannot be an advantage. It has to be punished. Mm. And you actually, uh, personally, what are you going to do or where are you going to be uh, after the EU elections, after May 25? We have to see how we can make this parliament run again. And then we have to debate who will become the next commission president, the next commission. So we will have, until the summer break in July, still a lot of work to do. Okay. Uh, before ending this uh, program, because it was really short, I would like to now um, ask you that you raise an important question that I didn't ask you and that you would like that I ask you. And you can answer directly to it, but in a short way. Uh, we should always ask uh, what advantages Europe uh, has for our citizens. And I think this year we have the 100th anniversary of the beginning of the First World War and the 75th uh, fifth anniversary of the beginning of the Second World War. In both European civil wars were more than 70 million people killed. And this Europe is an answer to that, that such a thing can never happen again. This we should be seen in such a moment where we see waging war again in Europe. That was your answer. Thank, thank you, Mr. Buck. And thank you, all of you, to follow us. See you next week. Bye.